As a child, you have to trust your parents and teachers. You have to hope that they are telling you the truth because they are the people who teach us about the world. But sometimes, teachers lie. Some of the things we learn at school might not be as accurate or factual as you'd like to think. These are lies you learned in school. Number 15. Christopher Columbus First of all, Christopher Columbus and his men were definitely not the first non-natives to set foot in the Americas. The Vikings did so a long time before him, and they actually had settlements in North America. And when Columbus arrived there, the local people did not think he was a godlike figure at all. Second of all, when Columbus arrived in what is the modern-day Bahamas, his men were so frustrated after the excruciatingly long trip. and because they thought Columbus was lying to them about India the entire time, they actually began a mutiny and put him in a cage. I will discover a shortcut to India and bring back some of the great wealth I find there. He was later released, though, and Columbus actually died without ever knowing that he had just discovered two whole new continents, even if he did three more trips to the Americas. He also never set foot in actual North America. He did nonetheless adventure himself in Central and South America. We don't exactly know when or where he was born. We think it was somewhere in the Republic of Genoa, but we can't know for sure. He also wasn't a very nice guy. He had many slaves, and he would ship the natives back to Spain to be sold as slaves as well. He did this because he couldn't find many gems or gold in the New World, so he saw the people there as the next best thing. Not cool, Columbus. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. The reason we've highlighted this installment on our list as our odd topic, as opposed to as a main installment, is that it's something that's up for debate rather than completely provable. But most people are starting to come around to the possibility that Jesus probably didn't look like what our school education tells us he looked like. School teaches us he was Caucasian with blue eyes, but considering where he was born and who his mother was, it seems so much more likely that Jesus would have had a darker complexion. The photo on the left shows what we've been told Jesus looks like, but the photo on the right shows what a lot of people think he actually might have looked like. What do you think? Did he look how we've been told he looked? Or seeing as he was born in Bethlehem, which is in Palestine, do you think he looked more like the photo on the right? As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Caligula made his horse a consul of the Roman Empire. Caligula was a renowned Roma emperor who was extremely known for his bizarre and unconventional ways. But the one story in particular that captivated historians to date is the one about his beloved horse, Incitatus. Incitatus, a new senator of Rome. He loved his horse so much that he gave him a marble stall, an ivory manger, a bejeweled collar, and even a house. I mean, that horse was better treated than most of us. But what made Incitatus world famous wasn't his riches and jewels, it was the fact that he was appointed. Yeah, I said appointed. The horse was an official in Caligula's government. Now, I know what you must all be thinking, Caligula was crazy, right? But it's not that simple. Historians believe that Caligula appointed his horse only to insult and humiliate senators and other elites of the empire. The message was, you guys are so stupid, even my horse would do a better job at ruling Rome than you. Needless to say, it would be very ridiculing to have to share your seat at the Senate with a horse. But the truth is, we have no way of knowing if Caligula actually appointed the first equine official in history. It might all be simply rumors that were written down as historical facts decades after Caligula's death by a Roman historian that wasn't around when the anecdote would have taken place. Number 13. Lincoln didn't believe African Americans should have the same rights as white people. 
Abraham Lincoln is believed to have been the first spokesman to fight for the equality of the African American people in the USA. But in fact, that is far from the truth. Lincoln even said it himself at a debate on September 18, 1853, that he was not and had never been for the social and political equality of the white and black races. He then continued to say that he opposed black people having the right to vote, to serve on juries, to hold office, and even to marry white people. With firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right. So, as you can see, Lincoln wasn't the progressive mind that we all seem to think. He thought that slavery was morally wrong, but he wasn't in any way okay with black people being normal citizens of the USA. He even went so far as to say that the only solution to the slavery issue was to free all slaves and literally send them back to Africa. Needless to say, a speech like that would come with mountains of criticism nowadays, and for good reason. Lincoln advocated colonialism and inherently believed that there was a superiority in the white race and inferiority in the black race, something that we know today not to be true at all. We are all different, but no group of people is better than any other. Number 12. You can only taste certain things on certain parts of your tongue. You probably still remember the famous tongue map showing the different sections on your tongue that can taste different flavors. There's sweet at the tip of your tongue, salty and sour at the edges, and bitter at the very back. But guess what? That's not true. And not only is it not true, that theory was debunked a long time ago. It turns out we've all been misinterpreting the tongue map for over a century now. The scientist that created the map in the first place was merely suggesting that those areas contain more sensitivity to certain tastes. But he never said that those areas have the only sensitivity to those tastes. So, by his theory, sweet flavor's gonna be more easily translated at the tip of your tongue, but the rest of your tongue can perceive sweet as well, and that goes for all the flavors also. But as we've discovered, even that version of the tongue map is completely incorrect. The truth is, we have all different kinds of taste buds all over our tongues, and no area is more sensitive than any others. Talk about a century-old game of Chinese whispers. Number 11. Newton's Apple There are few stories in the history of science as iconic as the apple falling from a tree and triggering something of a eureka moment for Newton concerning the laws of gravity. But as it turns out, that never happened. It is, in fact, true, though, that Newton was indeed sitting under an apple tree when he started thinking about the problem of gravity. But the apple never fell on his head, like all the teachers in the world seem to sing in unison. And finally, it wasn't really the so-called eureka moment either, as it took Newton two decades to finally publish his theory of universal gravitation. And last but not least, everything points to the fact that Newton did didn't come up with that theory at all. He simply plagiarized it from other scientists that have been working on it for far longer than him. So not only is the Apple story a complete figment of the imagination, but also Newton's work isn't his own either. Talk about an enduring hoax. Many scientists had accused Newton during his lifetime of plagiarizing their work, to which he replied with a lot of smugness and sarcasm, making him a little bit of a con man, if you ask me. Number 10. Albert Einstein failed math in school and was a terrible student. It's almost impossible to believe that the most revered scientific genius in human history, the most brilliant mind of all times, was actually a lousy student. You guessed it, I'm talking about Albert Einstein. And it is true that in school, he flunked math constantly. A heavy throw to all those who believe in human solidarity. Some people go so far as to say that he was actually a little late in his speech and motor development, meaning he learned how to speak later than the other children. But his biographers have long denied that fact. 
What is indisputably true, though, is that he was never a very good student and he showed no academic ability. And for him to become the most famous physicist of all times, well, it takes a very special person. He even dropped out of school at the age of 15. All of these facts, though, can be very easily explained if you've ever had the chance of sharing your class with an exceptionally gifted kid. They're usually extremely bored, and sometimes they lose their interest in academic matters because they're simply too advanced for their peers. And thinking back, that's probably what happened to little Albert. He was just bored to death. Number 9. Diamonds are made from ultra-pressurized coal. Contrary to what you have always heard about how diamonds are formed, the reality is that they do not come from pressurized coal. So Superman lied to us. He would have never been able to create the shiny stones by crushing clumps of coal between his hands. So Lois Lane would have had to be satisfied with a coal ring. Not very glamorous if you ask me. Maybe the misinformation comes from the fact that both diamonds and coal are made of carbon, but scientists say that the possibility of diamonds forming from pressurized coal is extremely low, if it's even possible at all. The truth is, it's very difficult to understand how they form because of the extreme depth inside the Earth where their formation occurs. We find them on the surface because they're ejected by volcanic eruptions from the center of the Earth. Who knew diamonds were so badass? Also, coal comes from plants, and some diamonds are believed to be much older than the Earth's earliest plants started to even exist. Some diamonds have also been found in meteorites that fell on our planet, meaning that they also form somewhere else than on Earth. Long story short, we don't know much about diamonds, but they sure are pretty. Number 8. Bees shouldn't be able to fly. We're not entirely sure when the misconception started about bees defying every known law of aviation because they shouldn't be able to fly. The fact is, they can and do all the time. I mean, if a tiny little cute bee was breaking the laws of physics every time it decided to go for a fly, it would rip apart time and space irreparably. And considering the immense number of bees that are flying around every single day, well, you can do the math. the universe wouldn't exist, and the culprit would be the bees in your garden. I mean, the little workers that give us honey for our pancakes are not the destroyers of worlds. They're only insects going about their own business, and their wings are perfectly equipped for taking them off ground. But bees do keep a secret, though. They don't fly like planes do. They fly in a completely different way than anything else. Bees move their little wings in a partial spin, which creates tiny hurricanes that keep them in the air. Cool, huh? Bees are starting to sound like superheroes now, which is way cooler than thinking there's no way they should be able to fly. Number 7. Witches were burned at the stake. The witch hunt hysteria in Europe peaked between the 15th and the 18th centuries, and it killed some 50,000 people. It was the most prolific in modern-day Germany, Italy, Scotland, France, and Scandinavia. But contrary to what most people believe, the so-called witches were not killed by being burned at the stake. They instead were usually decapitated or hanged, and then the remains would be incinerated to protect people against post-mortem sorcery, meaning they were scared that the witches would somehow put a spell on their executioners after they were dead. Yeah, apparently people back then believed in all sorts of crazy things. So the iconic image of the witches being burned alive is simply not true. They were burned after being murdered. Funny fact, it was actually imposed by law to burn the bodies of suspected witches, and that law goes as far in history as the Holy Roman Empire. And because of it, church leaders and local government officials had to oversee the burning of the unfortunate people that had been accused of witchcraft. Also, another common misconception is that all people condemned for sorcery were women. But in reality, there were men too, and even children. But it remains a fact that the vast majority were, nonetheless, of the female gender. Number 6. The Great Wall of China is the only man-made structure that can be seen from space. Do you think the Great Wall of China is the only man-made structure that can be seen from space? 
who better to ask than an astronaut? And they all say the same thing. It isn't true. And there's a very simple explanation. Although the Great Wall is 4,500 miles long, making it a very impressive and huge structure, it was made from materials found in the same area as it sits, making it very difficult to discern from such a big distance as a space shuttle. So, in other words, the Great Wall of China camouflages perfectly well with its surroundings. And so, that also debunks the other theory involving the wall and space, the one that says it's the only structure visible from the moon. If you can't see it from a shuttle, you definitely can't see it from the moon. But apparently, the controversy about it is still well alive and being discussed in China. They even have scientists specifically devoted to prove that, in fact, the Great Wall is visible from space. I guess that if it isn't true, they feel the Great Wall's not that great after all. Number 5. Raindrops are tear-shaped We've all seen the cartoon raindrops having the iconic tear shape. Even in school books, they represent rain like that. But apparently, reality is far from that. They are not shaped like the classical raindrop drawing. Try to imagine what they could possibly look like, then. Actually, because of the laws of physics and gravity like surface tension and air resistance, most raindrops look more like the top half of a hamburger bun. So the next time you're walking under the rain, just picture in your head thousands or billions of tiny little hamburger buns dropping from the sky, because that's closer to reality than what your teachers have been telling you all your life. Imagine how different children's drawings are going to be if we start teaching them the true shape of raindrops. And some other raindrops look like minuscule kidney beans when they're around 3 millimeters. The smallest ones are spherical, which means they're round, but the biggest ones, the ones that measure 4 millimeters and bigger, they actually look like a parachute. Makes sense since they're dropping from the sky, right? So there you have it. Raindrops come in many shapes, except for raindrop shape. Number 4. You can't start a sentence with a conjunction. You can never start a sentence with a conjunction. If you remember having this drilled into your head by your teachers during English lessons in elementary school, you're not alone. We can all still hear the teacher's voice saying it over and over again until it was so engraved in our brains we would never forget it. Except many award-winning writers, journalists, copywriters, and even bloggers do it all the time. It's almost like they're rebelling against the rules of proper grammar, but in reality, they're not breaking any rules at all, since it's totally okay to start a sentence with and or but. And if you didn't notice, I did it in this video a couple of times already. So to understand why the teachers were so determined, let's first start by remembering what is a conjunction exactly. Well, it connects two thoughts or ideas, which seems fairly obvious. So logically, you wouldn't start a sentence by connecting two things, right? But you can, and if you want to, you should. Because we looked into it closely, and there is no rule anywhere that says we can't start a sentence with a conjunction. So, have at it. Write an entire text starting only with conjunctions if you feel like it. And if your teacher complains, tell him to watch this video. Number 3. Deoxygenated blood is blue. We've all studied in school that blood that comes out of the heart is red and blood that goes back in is blue, and that is why our veins look blue under our skin. The teachers explained it by telling us that the blood that comes out of our heart is fully oxygenated, meaning it has lots of oxygen from our lungs to feed every single little corner of our bodies. But the blood that comes back to the heart has been traveling all over, delivering oxygen to every organ, every muscle, every bone. So it's going back to the heart to pick up some more oxygen to quickly go back to the job. Therefore, the deoxygenated blood is blue due to the lack of oxygen. But apparently, folks, this is not true. All blood is red. The deoxygenated blood is darker and the oxygenated blood is brighter, but they are both fully red. The reason why we see our veins in a blue color is simply because of all the layers of skin and fat that are on top of our veins. So the light reflected appears to be blue when in reality it isn't. It's a similar effect that happens when we see the sun in an orange or red color when in reality it's white. It's simply light reflecting and creating colors and in a way creating an illusion. Number two, 
humans only use 10% of their brains. The lifelong myth that we only use 10% of our brains is only that a myth. Let me put it this way, the brain represents 3% of the body's weight and uses 20% of the body's energy. That means we're not using it slightly, we're using every single part of it all the time, even when we're sleeping. I mean, the human brain is one of the most complex things out there. It performs millions of mundane things like brushing your teeth, but it also composes concertos and solves incredibly difficult mathematical equations. Not only that, it also harbors all of the human emotions, memory, and self-awareness. It is constantly working non-stop. Although it is true that most of how the brain works remains a complete mystery to us, it is categorically not true that we only use 10% of it. If you've ever seen an MRI, you can actually see every different hemisphere of the brain lighting up in front of your eyes. Depending on what we are seeing or what we are feeling or recalling, we use different parts of our brain. And we need all of them to exist and survive. So if we only use 10% of it, we would simply be a completely different species if we would even manage to stay alive. Number 1. Bats are blind. Everyone thinks bats are blind because they are nocturnal creatures and are extremely good hunters when it's completely dark outside. But the truth is, they are not blind. So how can they see at night then? Well, think of bats like a sonar with wings, because that's pretty much what they are. They use echolocation to hunt instincts, and we all know how hard it is to locate a mosquito in the middle of the night. But bats can not only know where they are, but snap them in mid-air as fast as lightning. Echolocation works by using sound waves and echoes to determine where objects are in space. Bats send out sound waves from their mouth and nose, and when the wave hits an object or an unsuspected mosquito, it produces an echo. The echo bounces off the object, and when it returns to the bat's ears, they can figure out where exactly, with clean-cut precision, the object is. With this technique, bats can locate an object as small as a human hair in absolute dark. But on top of that, bats also have a pair of very functional eyes, which they use when there's light outside. So basically, they can see in any situation possible. Imagine if soldiers could do the same. They would be invincible. I don't know about you, but I had no idea that teachers were so wrong in so many things. What else do you think you learned in school but is, in fact, not true? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.